Hi, I'm Infernum, and this is my recap for the anime Blue Box Score. If you like my recaps, please subscribe. A slice of life story about high schoolers attending a sports focused school. Every morning, Taki trains in the gym, completely smitten with a girl. One day, everything flips upside down, and suddenly the distance between them shrinks. Now they live under the same roof. A love story that blossomed in a single gym. Taki rushes to school early each day because there's someone special already playing basketball, a girl named Kano. And every single morning, he sprints like his life depends on it just to catch a glimpse of her. But one day, bam, Kano accidentally nails him with a basketball. In her panic, she tries to make up for it by offering him a chocolate bar. Because, you know, chocolate fixes everything. Then coolly returns to her training. Taki is left dazed, but not because of the ball. Both of them attend the sports academy. Taki plays badminton while Kano dominates the basketball court. Fast forward a few hours and the gym's a madhouse packed with students from different sports teams. Through all the chaos, Taki's thoughts are only on Kano, dreaming of living with her under the same roof. Spoiler, he's a bit of a daydreamer. However, his friend decides it's time for a reality check. Dude, Kano's a basketball star. She's way out of your league. Taki, a little crushed, stands his ground. Yeah, but my mom played basketball too. We've got something in common. I'm not giving up. With newfound determination, his friend gives him some solid advice. At least get her phone number, man. Then you'll stand a chance. Out of nowhere, Taki's other friend Hina shows up, raising an eyebrow. What are you guys chatting about? Taki awkwardly brushes it off, claiming it's nonsense. But then, in a moment of desperation, he asks her for advice. What do I do to impress a girl? Without hesitation, Hina launches into full advice mode. First off, Taki, you've gotta be someone reliable. Girls love that. The next piece of advice? Show off your masculine physique. Naturally, Taki took this very seriously. The next day, he was heading to the gym when he spotted Kano sitting by the door. Uh-oh, the gym was locked. Taki stared at her for a moment, building up the courage to approach her. Just as he did, she sneezed, and Taki, ever the gentleman, immediately offered his scarf, assuming she must be freezing. Then, in peak overpreparedness, he pulled out a hand warmer, realizing he might have gone a little overboard. But to his surprise, Kano smiled and teased him. What else have you got in that magic bag of yours? She returned the scarf, saying she wasn't cold, while Taki's mind was already racing, imagining her as his wife. Just as things were getting interesting, the security guard showed up and unlocked the gym. Kano thanked Taki, leaving him stunned. How did she know his name? For the rest of the day, he was on cloud nine, thrilled that Kano knew who he was. And of course, Taki decided it was high time to get her contact info. Later, Taki was staring dreamily at Kano again when Hina, ever the mischief maker, popped up. She instantly figured out what was going on and warned him, you might want to stay out of this. As Taki was walking away, Hina couldn't resist teasing him. Oh, by the way, I saw Kano hanging out with some guy. And with that bombshell, she sauntered off, leaving Taki in a state of mild panic. After training, Taki headed back to the gym to grab his towel, only to find Kano still practicing. I just wanted to spend more time with the ball, she said casually. Taki watched her with admiration until Kano, in a surprising twist, invited him to play basketball with her. Naturally, Taki accepted, and naturally, he lost and was completely exhausted by the end. While catching his breath, he mentioned that his mom used to play basketball, to which Kano replied that her mom did too, and she'd been learning the game since childhood. Taki, still trying to impress her, said, I'm not really into basketball though, badminton's more my thing. Taki praised Kano for her dedication, recalling a moment from a year and a half ago. Back then, even after a basketball tournament, she hadn't given up. Taki vividly remembered the first time he saw her, practicing in the gym, determined despite her team's loss. That was the moment he fell head over heels. He was impressed by how Kano didn't let defeat stop her. Suddenly, he realized Kano was staring at him, surprised by his words. Just then, their teacher walked in, announcing it was time to wrap things up. Kano offered to take care of the basketballs, but as they reached for one at the same time, their hands touched. Classic movie moment. The next day, Taki was on his way to school when his mom handed him lunch. That's when he noticed a flyer with Kano's picture. His mom, seeing his reaction, was surprised he knew her. She then casually dropped a bombshell. She used to play on the same team as Kano's mom. His mom went on about how Kano was such a smart and talented girl, but there was a catch. They're moving abroad soon. This hit Taki like a ton of bricks. How could Kano just leave like that? Without thinking, he ran to school, desperate to see her. He couldn't wrap his head around why she worked so hard only to leave everything behind. When he finally made it to the gym, there she was, right in front of him. Without holding back, Taki asked her to make it to the nationals, pouring his heart out and admitting he'd been watching her all along. Taki, feeling a rush of emotions, told Kano she shouldn't give up or fly abroad, insisting her future was here. But then, Kano dropped another surprise. 
I'm not going anywhere. Taki's eyes widened, and his face turned beet red. Kano explained that her parents were the ones leaving, but she'd be staying with family friends. Before Taki could process that, he fumbled for an escape. Just as he was about to bolt, Kano admitted that it had been tough for her to think about the competition she failed. But, after hearing Taki's encouraging words, she decided to keep pushing forward. Want to play basketball with me again? She asked, catching him off guard. The next day, Taki lay in bed, replaying the previous day's conversation in his head. What on earth did I say to her? He wondered, grateful for the day off. He definitely wasn't ready to face Kano yet. But when he finally made his way downstairs to the kitchen, there she was. Good morning, Kano chirped as if it were the most normal thing in the world. Taki froze, completely confused. What is she doing here? He thought. That's when his mom and Kano's mom walked in, and Taki's mom casually dropped the news. Oh, by the way, Kano's going to be living with us from now on. Keep an eye on her, okay? Kano once again introduced herself to Taki's family, thanking them for their hospitality. The entire family was thrilled. After all, Kano was not only talented but also stunning. Meanwhile, Taki was having a mini-crisis. I can barely handle seeing her at school, and now she's here every day. My heart is definitely not going to survive this, he thought. While Taki was lost in his thoughts, Kano casually walked into his room, announcing that the bath was ready. Panicking, Taki tried to make an excuse and muttered something about reading a book. But Kano came closer and recognized the book, smiling at him. Taki, in a desperate move, offered her the book, thinking to himself, if she gets any closer, I'm done for. Kano, however, shared that although it felt strange living in an unfamiliar house, knowing Taki made her feel comfortable. With that, she smiled and left for her room. Later, Taiki went to take his bath and realized that the only person acting weird was him. The next day, Taki was playing badminton with his friend, who quickly noticed something was off. You're way too hyped up today, his friend said. Taki blushed and confessed. It's not as bad as you think. He explained that Kano was now living with him. His friend, wide-eyed, warned Taki to keep things quiet. Kano's super popular. If her fans find out, they'll destroy you, man. Taki nodded, admitting that he didn't want to trouble Kano with his feelings. For now, he decided to focus on getting stronger and making it to the Nationals. If I can achieve that, I'll finally confess to her. During their break, Hina appeared out of nowhere and asked, Why are you so determined, Taki? Before Taki could answer, his friend jumped in, explaining that Taki was aiming for the Nationals, though he didn't have much of a chance. Taki was now training hard every evening, pushing himself to get stronger. Just when he thought he could relax, Kano showed up unexpectedly and asked, Can you show me how it's done? Taki had a training match, and Kano couldn't help but be impressed. You're so quick. Your reflexes are amazing, she remarked. But Taki, still humble, admitted, I'm not ready for nationals yet, but I'll keep trying. This caught Kano by surprise. You want to make it to nationals? She asked with newfound curiosity. Then, out of nowhere, she asked him to wait and disappeared for a moment. When she returned, she handed him a small bracelet. I made this when I decided to stay in Japan. It's a symbol of determination and believing in yourself, she explained. Taki was a little stunned, but he accepted it gratefully. Kano tied it around his ankle and encouraged him, don't give up, okay? Make it to nationals for me. She then revealed that she had a matching one herself, wished him good night, and left, leaving Taki wondering if he was going to lose his mind from all the cuteness. The next morning, Taki woke up ridiculously early. Kano noticed and teased him. Where are you rushing off to? It's summer vacation. Taki quickly came up with an excuse. Ah, I've got practice at the gym, and I wanted to go early, he mumbled, realizing how much their situation felt like a married couple's morning routine. At the gym, Hina noticed Taki's hard work and teased him. You're really giving it your all, huh? Something going on with you and Kano? Panic flashed across Taki's face. He knew he couldn't tell Hina that Kano was living with him. She would tell everyone, and that would be the end of his peaceful life. As if things couldn't get worse, Kano showed up at the gym, handing him his wallet. You forgot this at home, she said. Taki's heart dropped. No, 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 Hina's going to figure everything out, he thought, as he thanked Kano nervously. As she walked away, Hina just grinned. Well, well, look at you, you're not bad at talking to girls after all. Later during lunch, Taki's friend gave him some advice. You really should talk things out with Kano. If you don't, she might think you don't want to communicate with her. The teacher asked the students to help carry the chairs to the gym. Not wanting to fall behind, Taki quickly offered to take an extra chair from Kano, but she refused and walked ahead. This puzzled Taki. Did Kano get mad at him? While he was overthinking it, Hina gave him a thumbs up, as if she knew something. Then, without wasting time, Hina decided to get to know Kano better and asked her, Do you have a boyfriend? Kano smiled and replied that she didn't. Taki was shocked by how blunt Hina could be. They'd just met, but Hina wasn't done. 
She pressed on. Why don't you have a boyfriend? It's so cute to hold hands, go on dates and stuff. Kano, still smiling, calmly replied that she was only focused on basketball for now. After they finished the task, the teacher noticed Taki and mentioned that the badminton coach had taken note of his efforts. If he keeps working this hard, there's a chance he'll go to nationals. Everyone started noticing how much Taki was pushing himself. Then suddenly, he saw Kano fall. His friend, never missing a chance to tease him, made a comment, but Taki ignored him and rushed over to Kano. Are you okay? He asked. Kano, while treating her injury, responded that she was fine. Then, as if out of the blue, she added, Can we just stand here and talk? Taiki was caught off guard by the question and immediately apologized. He decided it was time to come clean. I didn't tell anyone that we live together because you're popular, you're the best at basketball, and I'm, well, I'm nobody. People will start gossiping, and that'll cause problems for both of us during practice. Kano was surprised by his honesty and replied, Oh, that's no big deal. I actually thought you were hiding it because you liked Hina. Taki was dumbfounded and, laughing, said, You've got quite the imagination, Kano. Kano said it wasn't funny. After that, the coach reminded everyone that they needed to train hard and prepare for the next tournament. Taki's friend explained that the road to the nationals wasn't going to be easy. First, they had to become the best in the school, then break into the top 16 at the regionals, and finally rank high at the prefecture level. Taki said it sounded doable, but he noticed there were a lot of people watching today. His friend pointed out that most of them were there for Kano and that Taki had quite a few rivals. However, Hina also had her fair share of admirers. The coach had high hopes for Hina, confident she'd make it to nationals. Then during her performance, Hina noticed Taki watching and cheekily said, that'll be 2,000 yen for the show. Taki smirked, replying, what show? There's nothing worth paying for. Hina teased back, saying it's tough to look away from an angel like her. Taki rolled his eyes and said, keep dreaming before heading off to continue his training. On his way home, Taki thought that if Hina didn't act so wild all the time, Kano wouldn't get the wrong idea about them. Just then, Hina decided to head to the local doctor. Taki suddenly remembered that Hina might see Kano coming into his house, so he tried to hurry her along. However, Hina got distracted by food and a cute little dog along the way. Taki thought it would be nice to buy her something sweet since she was drooling over the treats, but Hina said she couldn't indulge because she was focused on her goals. Taki told her how strong she was and admitted he hadn't expected this level of determination from her. He added that Hina's confidence was really impressive. Hina smiled and replied that the real cool one was Taki. After all, he had the guts to talk to Kano. Hina continued, saying Taki was awesome because no matter how tough things got, he kept pushing forward. Just then, Hina noticed something behind Taki and told him not to look. But of course, Taki turned around and saw Kano standing there with Haru, a second-year student who was the best badminton player in school. Hina decided to support Taki and said they were just friends, considering they were still hanging out together. However, the next day, Taki noticed Kana chatting with Haru. Hina explained that they were in the same class and sat next to each other, urging Taki to accept it. But she also reassured him, reminding him that Kana herself said her mind was solely on basketball. Taki, however, countered with the classic line, you can't control your heart, as if it were a rebellious teenager. Meanwhile, the coach was watching everyone like a hawk and declared that hope rested solely on Haru, but there was a diamond in the rough that needed polishing, and that diamond was Taki. After the match, Taki decided to clean up but just as he was getting into it, a basketball whizzed by and nearly knocked him over. He looked up to see Kana sprinting toward him. Taki thought about simply returning her ball and making a quick getaway, but Kana asked him when he finished for the day. He replied he'd be done by seven, and then Haru swooped in, calling out to Kana in a sweet tone. Taki couldn't believe his ears. How can he be so smooth, he thought, feeling a little jelly. As Taki sprinted home, he couldn't shake the thought of Haru calling Kana that. Meanwhile, all his brain could do was replay the moment like a broken record, and he wondered why he was even fixating on it. Suddenly, he bumped into Kana, who was surprised to see him back so quickly. Taki tried to escape to his room, but Kana stopped him, clearly on a mission to interrogate him. She noticed he was sweating buckets and asked if he had rushed home so she wouldn't be left waiting on his doorstep like a puppy. Taki realized she had picked up on his nervousness, and he felt like a fool for stressing over the little things. Kana thanked him, but Taki couldn't contain his embarrassment and decided to make another lap around the neighborhood, hoping that running away from his feelings would somehow help. Taki realized he shouldn't be filling his head with nonsense. The next day, Kyo decided to ask about the relationship between Kana and Haru. However, Taki shrugged it off, claiming it didn't bother him. Just then, they ran into Haru and Kana, who were deep in discussion. Taki immediately turned around, 
and Kyo noticed that Taki was acting like he couldn't care less. Eavesdropping, Taki overheard Haru say he liked diligent girls like Kana. Just his luck, the next match was between Taki and Haru. It was painfully obvious that Haru wasn't giving Taki even a fighting chance. Kyo could see that Taki was struggling. After what he'd heard, it was hard for him to focus, but he noticed Kana watching intently the whole time. Haru won the match, but surprisingly, Taki wasn't upset. Kyo was amazed that Taki seemed in high spirits. Taki admitted he really enjoyed playing, despite the loss. As the second half began, Taki recalled the headband Kana had made for him and decided to give it his all. Everyone noticed Taki playing exceptionally well. After the match, Kyo encouraged Taki, telling him not to be disheartened, but Taki felt a sting from losing, even though Haru was a tough opponent. On the way home, Taki pondered the match and how he could improve to beat Haru. Suddenly, Kana caught up to him and said he should run after her. They raced to the park, where Kana grabbed some rackets from the gym. She reminded Taki that he had wanted to play with her, so she decided to make it happen. Kana attempted to serve, but struggled, prompting Taki to give her some advice. To her surprise, it worked. They began to play, and Kana commented that she had seen Taki during the match earlier. It wasn't terrible, she teased, grinning. In the second half, Taki managed to outmaneuver her but still couldn't claim victory. Kana laughed, noticing Taki's competitive spirit, and remarked, you really hate losing, don't you? Kana noticed that even today, Taki wasn't considering giving up against a strong opponent. After hearing Kana's words, Taki decided to believe in himself and promised to win next time. Kana said it was time for them to head home, but Taki replied that he would go later so they wouldn't be seen together. The next day, the coach paired Haru and Taki together. Haru arrived and said they needed to go, but then he turned around and exclaimed that Taki had a crush on Kana. Taki froze in place, utterly caught off guard. Haru decided to put Taki through some serious training, but Taki quickly deflated and felt exhausted. Haru, ever the tease, remarked that even Kana wouldn't give up so easily. She was a strong girl. This comment irritated Taki, fueling his determination, and he pushed through until the end. By the time classes rolled around, Taki was completely wiped out. Feeling a bit defeated, he realized that the only place he could rest now was in class. Kyo was surprised to see how seriously Haru had taken Taki under his wing. He looked like a different person altogether. Haru occasionally offered Taki tips, and surprisingly, Taki listened. As Taki was heading home after practice, he unexpectedly ran into Haru and some classmates near the school, with Kana standing close by. Taki's heart raced as he tried to act casual. Haru noticed that Taki was breathing a little unevenly whenever Kana was around, so he decided to introduce him to his friends and announced that Taki and he would be a pair. Haru took it upon himself to share that Taki was a bit weak and that his punches weren't very impressive. Taki was already feeling down about this, but then Haru added that Taki had a bright future ahead of him, and if he didn't give up, he would make it. Taki was taken aback by this unexpected turn of events, especially when he spotted Kana whispering that Taki was doing great. Then, Haru casually mentioned that a girl had messaged him. Taki's eyes widened in surprise. Haru had a girlfriend? Suddenly, Taki found himself in a world of confusion, wondering how he hadn't thought about that sooner. Haru took the opportunity to thank Kana once more for helping him pick out a gift for his girlfriend, and it was at that moment he decided to poke the bear and tease Taki even more by closing the door on any questions about his relationship with Kana. It's been exactly a month since Kano moved in with Taki, and by now, Taki is fully adjusted to having her around. As he enjoys his bento, his friend Kyo brings up tomorrow's badminton game, but quickly notices how unusually cheerful Taki is. Kyo raises an eyebrow and asks if everything's fine between him and Kano, causing Taki to turn red with embarrassment. Suddenly, Kano messages him, and he jumps out of his seat with excitement. But it turns out she's texting to say they accidentally switched uniforms. Determined to return it, Taki heads off, only to bump into Hario, who immediately senses that Taki's hiding something. Taki bolts and rushes to Kano's classroom, where he instead encounters Hina. She, too, notices that something's up, and in his flustered state, Taki accidentally drops Kano's uniform. Mortified, he begs Hina not to touch it, admitting he hasn't washed it in a month. Hina looks visibly disturbed, but it buys Taki just enough time to snatch the uniform back and continue his search for Kano. Just then, she messages him again, telling him to meet her on the rooftop. Taki dashes off and finally hands over the uniform. The bell rings, and as Kano starts changing into her uniform, Taki goes bright red and quickly excuses himself, offering to keep watch outside but the muffled sounds from inside leave him far too flustered to concentrate. Once Kano finishes, she heads to class, leaving Taki standing there, utterly dazed. 
After practice, Hina catches up with him and asks about the qualifiers happening tomorrow. Taki tries to brush it off, claiming he's not worried. Walking home with Hario, Hario reassures him too, saying he shouldn't stress about it. That evening, Taki's mom, noticing he's a little on edge, insists he pack his things for the qualifiers in advance. As he scrambles, he accidentally spills water on his uniform, forcing him to run back to his room. Realizing he needs to calm down, he grabs his racket and decides to squeeze in a quick practice session. However, Kano noticed him practicing and asked why he decided to warm up so late. She also pointed out that Taki's shirt was on inside out, which flustered him so much that he didn't even think twice before taking it off right then to fix it. To his surprise, he noticed that Kano seemed embarrassed, her gaze lingering as she commented that he definitely built up some muscles. She motioned for him to come closer, and with a gentle smile, she gave him a small pep talk to ease his nerves, telling him to relax and show what he's really capable of. The next day, Taki arrived fully prepared, and Hario was quick to notice his calm demeanor. The doubles match began, and Taki found it surprisingly easy. Hario, standing beside him, confidently told Taki that there was no way they'd lose at the regional level as long as they kept their focus. Just then, a familiar face approached Hario. It was an old friend who recognized him immediately. Taki was surprised by their connection, but even more surprised when Hario's friend brought up an old promise. Hario had promised him Kano's phone number if he ever lost a match. But since that hadn't happened, the friend was still waiting. With a smirk, Hario countered that he'd only give up the number if the friend managed to beat Taki in a singles qualifier match. The friend, grinning, looked Taki up and down, muttering something about how this would be easy, before heading off. Later, when Taki got home, he overheard Kano talking with his mom. He felt guilty about how he'd spoken to Kano the night before, worrying more about his qualifiers than her feelings. Just as he was about to retreat, he caught a bit of their conversation. Kano was explaining how she might have said something that upset Taki the night before. Realizing they'd both been a little harsh, he decided to stop eavesdropping, stepped into the kitchen, and announced his return. The next day, the singles qualifier began. Taki was ready to give it his all, knowing Kano was rooting for him just as much as he was for her. Hario watched Taki play and confidently declared that today would be his victory. After all, he'd trained under Hario himself. The first round kicked off, but Taki missed the opening point. Just then, a group of girls arrived to watch, adding some extra pressure. Hario noticed Taki's hits were slightly off and smirked, explaining that Taki was doing it on purpose to throw his opponent off balance. Meanwhile, Kyo was heading to his own match when he spotted Kano standing off in the distance. He encouraged her to come closer and, with a grin, revealed that he knew everything. He let her in on the fact that Hario had bet her phone number on Taki's win, though Taki himself wouldn't gain anything from this. Kyo then slyly suggested that Kano should go on an outing with him if Taki won. He added that Taki seemed to be trying so hard, partly because of her. Kyo went on to share how Taki hadn't been able to play like this before. He'd grown stronger because someone special, like Kano, was around to cheer him on. Kano took it all in, surprised by the realization. When Taki started scoring points, she felt a surge of excitement and with a smile, agreed to Kyo's proposal. She promised that if Taki won, she'd go with him to the aquarium, a deal that added a bit more spark to the match unfolding before them. Taki finally managed to score a point, but the match ended there. In the next match, he lost completely though. Just then, Hina appeared, teasing him as usual, until Taki suddenly noticed a message from Kana inviting him to the aquarium. Shocked, he dropped his phone, and everyone saw that Kana had invited him on what looked suspiciously like a date. However, Taki was still in denial, insisting it wasn't actually a date. Once home, he found himself hesitating outside. He was head over heels for Kana, and the fact she invited him to the aquarium was making him nervous. In his room, Taki decided to study up on the fish they'd see, but his thoughts kept wandering to what to wear and how he hoped Kana would wear a dress. He then heard a sound from Kana's room and realized she was still awake too. The next morning, Taki overslept and panicked, rushing to their meeting spot. Lost in his nerves, he didn't notice Kana appear behind him, looking stunning in a dress. Together, they headed into the aquarium. Kana was captivated by the sights, while Taki, barely able to focus, was completely charmed by her cuteness. He wondered what Kana thought about this outing when she unexpectedly snapped a picture of him as a keepsake. They began exploring the aquarium, studying the fish together. Then, a little kid accidentally bumped into Kana, causing their hands to touch. In that moment, Taiki realized he truly wanted to be with her, but with Nationals still ahead, he didn't want to put her in an awkward position. He suggested they head back, 
but Kana stopped him, saying she needed to confess something. Taki's heart raced, thinking it might be a love confession, but instead, Kana apologized for assuming he'd lose by saying he still had a whole year ahead. Kana apologized to Taki, and he sighed heavily, realizing that his thoughts about a date had been pointless. The entire outing was just so Kana could apologize. Taki told her there was no need to worry, he hadn't dwelled on it at all. Then, he decided to give her a set of stickers, telling her she could send one if she ever wanted to talk, and he'd come to listen. Kana immediately started spamming stickers, and when Taki saw her face light up, he blushed, realizing just how beautiful she looked. Kana smiled and called him an amazing neighbor, but that wasn't exactly what he had hoped to hear. The next day, Kyo noticed that Taki was eating more than usual. When Taki said he was aiming for nationals, Kyo noted that he seemed cheerful, clearly pleased that the aquarium trip went well. Kyo then suggested that maybe Kana liked Taki too, which made Taki turn bright red and sit down just as Kana looked his way. Taki was lost in thought when Hina appeared, handing him a form that needed to be checked and submitted. Kyo picked up on Hina's unusual behavior and subtly encouraged her to stay focused, reminding Taki to take things seriously, as the regional tournament was no small matter. Kyo explained that Shijikawa's team was the best in the country, and if they didn't defeat them, nationals wouldn't even be a possibility. Taki asked Hina how she was doing, and she reassured him, saying he had nothing to worry about. She was determined to win. The gymnastics coach suddenly appeared with a reporter who wanted to interview Hina. Taki commented that when you look at Hina, she seems like a superstar, strong and skilled in her sport, even though she's just an ordinary girl at heart. Later, Hina visited a clinic, and after her session, she ran into Kana and greeted her. Kana decided to start a conversation, but Hina noticed the keychain Taki had given her and thought Taki might actually have a chance with Kana. So, she decided to share a story about him, the time Taki injured his own ankle to save her. Kana caught the hint of a smile on Hina's face and wondered if Hina was secretly in love with Taki. Just then, it started raining, and Hina found herself without an umbrella. Kana handed her one, revealing she had a spare, which Hina admired. Kana was not only kind but also really well prepared. Suddenly, a nurse rushed out, trying to catch up to Kana, who had forgotten her phone. Hina offered to return it and hurried after Kana, only to be shocked when she saw Kana go into Taki's house. Hina, not knowing what was going on, overheard Kana and Taki talking and was left utterly bewildered. Hina decided to go back to school and ask about the situation, but then remembered she hadn't returned Kana's phone. She called Taki and asked why Kana was going into his house. Taki and Kana decided to tell Hina everything, inviting her over to share the details. Hina quickly understood that Kana would be living with Taki while her parents were abroad, feeling a bit hurt that Taki hadn't mentioned this sooner, especially since they'd been best friends since childhood. Hina piled a bunch of books on him and said she would forgive him if he could last five hours without revealing any more secrets. It was a rather creative form of punishment, but she eventually forgave him. As she headed home, Hina realized why Kana and Taki had gotten so close so quickly. The next day, Hina was practicing her moves, and as always, she was amazing. But her focus was entirely on Kana, and she didn't understand why she was losing her rhythm. Returning to the changing room, she found Taki there and decided to scare him, but he explained that he had injured his leg. Hina noticed the bracelet Kana had made for him and felt a twinge of jealousy. Taki mentioned that they had promised each other they would make it to nationals together, and Hina realized just how close they had become, always supporting one another. Suddenly, Hina found herself in tears, not fully understanding why she felt this way. Deep down, she was envious of their bond and didn't want to feel alone. The next day, she kept making mistakes during practice, and Kyo noticed something was off with her. He speculated that Hina might be upset with Taki. Hina resolved not to interfere with Taki and Kana, and to stay out of their way. She pushed herself to keep going, realizing that everyone around her was worried about her, but she just couldn't seem to get it together. It was like trying to run a marathon while wearing clown shoes. She was all over the place. Hina ran into the school vice principal, who praised her for her interview and said she was just as amazing as her father. Hina felt the weight of expectations pressing down on her. All she wanted was to talk to Taki like they used to, but she knew she couldn't spend time with him without Kana getting the wrong idea. So she tried to avoid Taki and deal with everything on her own. The following week, Hina managed to pull herself together and stopped making mistakes during practice. But then, out of nowhere, she collided with a guy who darted out, causing her to fall 
and twist her ankle. Confused about what to do, she realized she had sprained her ankle. Just then, Taki appeared and offered to help her. Hina hesitated, wondering what would happen if Kana saw them together. But Taki reassured her that right now, she needed to think about herself and go to the nurse's office. Hina understood that she was trying to ignore Taki's concern because she was starting to develop feelings for him too. At the nurse's office, they told her that it was nothing serious, just a typical bruise. Taki teased her, calling her the queen of drama, and Hina replied that it wasn't her fault. She had so much on her plate. With the pain still lingering, Hina decided to voice her frustrations. She confessed that right now, there was someone she couldn't beat, referring to the judge who seemed infatuated with her and gave her scores for no reason. Taki, not realizing she was talking about him and Kana, tried to give her advice, encouraging her not to run away. But in the end, Hina felt even worse. After all, Taki had told her not to give up and to fight for love, which only complicated her feelings further. It was like trying to juggle flaming torches while riding a unicycle, difficult and definitely risky. Taki said it was time to go, and Hina stood up, insisting that her ankle didn't hurt anymore. She asked Taki to wish her good luck, and when he did, she flashed a bright smile that lit up the room. The day of the competition arrived, and Hina triumphed, taking first place. Taki and Kyo were thrilled with the results. However, Hina couldn't resist making another joke, promising to become even more charming in the future. After school, Taki headed home, ready to crash for the night. On his way, he ran into Kana, who excitedly told him she had just seen Hina. Kana was impressed that Hina had snagged a gold medal in her first year of competition. Taki supported Hina, teasing that she was such a goofball, completely obsessed with gymnastics. This reminded Kana of Hina, and she started to worry that she might be getting in the way of their friendship. But Kana wasn't about to back down. She lived next to Taki for basketball, and she was determined to keep things competitive. Taki woke up ready to head to school, but then he remembered that today was the day of the tryouts for both him and Kano. Taki, never one to slack off, had been training hard with Hario, who reminded him that taking a break is also important. After all, you can't just keep training endlessly. Hario gave Taki some advice and headed outside, where they bumped into Kano and her basketball team discussing the upcoming prefectural tournament. After school, as Taki headed home, he kept replaying Hario's advice in his head, trying to figure out why he struggled to block some of Hario's shots. Then he noticed Kano carrying bags and thought, maybe now's a good time to strike up a conversation. Approaching her, Kano assured him the bags weren't heavy, but she teased Taki, saying that it must feel awkward walking home with a girl. Taki, ever quick on his feet, decided to play along, pretending it was a casual, random meetup, and they ended up walking home together. On the way, Kano mentioned how friendly everyone in the neighborhood was and how they treated her kindly. She confessed that it was one of the reasons she hadn't given up and that she was really happy living at Taki's place. Taki then invited her to take a small detour, leading her to a shrine he's been visiting since childhood whenever he's faced a big competition. Together, they made a wish, with Taki sincerely hoping that he and Kano would both pass the tryouts. The next day arrived, and with it, the basketball tryouts. Kano went into the tryouts with complete focus, and her team triumphed in the first match. Afterward, Kano and Nagisa decided to take a quick restroom break, only to run into a group from another school who started gossiping about Kano. Looks like the competition is heating up both on and off the court, and that she hadn't improved at all. Nagisa wanted to step in and defend Kano, but Kano stopped her, saying they'd let the match do the talking. Meanwhile, Taki lost his own match to Hario. Noticing Kano's victory, but also her lack of enthusiasm, he overheard Nagisa trying to stick up for her and put two and two together. Suddenly, Kano appeared behind him, telling him to keep quiet as Nagisa might overhear. Kano remarked that Nagisa was a wonderful friend, and Taki, trying to cheer her up, suggested she ignore others' opinions. But Kano, with fierce determination, replied that she was going to beat Kagoharu's team and show what she was truly capable of. Taki was floored. Kano was way cooler than he'd realized. After the first day of tryouts, in the final match, Taki managed to defeat Hario, surprising everyone in the gym. He'd finally figured out Hario's playstyle, keeping his movements minimal and watching his opponent closely to predict his shots. With each match, Taki was getting better, and even Hario noticed, proud that Taki was now keeping up with his pace. Seeing their progress, the teacher decided to call off the match, reminding everyone to save their energy for tomorrow. Before leaving, Hario told Taki not to lose until they met again in the finals. On the way home, Taki walked with Hyo, 
feeling a growing sense of improvement. Hyo couldn't resist teasing him, asking if he'd confess his love if he made it to the national tryouts. For a brief moment, Taki imagined a wedding, but then quickly shook it off, admitting he wasn't quite ready for that yet. Of course, he wanted to confess, but he worried. What if Kano turned him down? Living together would get awkward, and he didn't want to make things uncomfortable for her. So, Taki resolved not to be selfish and to respect her feelings. Just then, they ran into a group from the badminton team outside a store, who offered to treat them to anything they wanted in the store for up to 500 yen. Inside, Taki found himself daydreaming about inviting Kano to the beach. When they stepped out, Taki and Kyo saw the girls, and Taki immediately got flustered. Noticing this, Kyo decided to head out, but Hina spotted them, snatched Taki's snack, and started playfully teasing him. Kano caught sight of this, and on her way out, Hina even promised she'd make Taki a bento. Kano asked Taki for one of his snacks, and he gave it to her. That's when Kano decided to speak up. She mentioned seeing Hina grab his snack and admitted it made her a bit jealous, but now that she'd voiced it, she felt better. With that, Kano took off, leaving Taki wondering what exactly she was jealous of. Was it over the snack? Or something else? The big day has finally arrived for Kana and Taki. Kana woke up to see that Taki was already doing his morning exercises. Taki explained that he was exercising to calm his nerves. Surprised, Kana decided to join him, hoping to relax as well. Taki shared that he has a doubles match today and a singles match tomorrow, noting that only one pair and one singles player can advance to the finals. Kana mentioned that her finals are also tomorrow, and she can't wait for them. Taki remembered Kana's words from the previous day and said he would ask her about them after the finals. At school, the various sports sections were already bustling with competitions, and badminton took center stage. Taki and Hario were waiting for their turn, and Taki immediately liked the atmosphere in the hall. Hario decided to check out Hyoda's match, a player he had once lost to. Hyoda noticed Hario, greeted him briefly, and then left. Hario praised Hyoda, saying that if he were a video game character, his stats would be the perfect combination. From the match, it was clear that Hyoda was dominating his opponents. Taki wasn't discouraged. Instead, he found inspiration while watching the match. Hario remarked again about Hyoda's strength, and the two went to warm up. During a break, Taki stepped outside and noticed a boy sleeping nearby. He immediately pointed out that the boy's wallet had fallen from his pocket. After that, Hario called him back, and Taki returned. Yosa, a junior from the same university as Hyoda, was also performing impressively, showing promising results. The next match was Hario's team versus Hyoda's team. In the first game, they lost, but by the second game, Taki stepped up and began returning shots he never could before. Taki seized an opportunity and landed a powerful shot, but it went out of bounds. Frustrated, Taki started blaming himself, but Hario patted him on the shoulder and told him to pull himself together. Kana returned home, and Taki's mom congratulated her on making it to the finals. Meanwhile, Taki had lost his match. Later, Kana went to his room, but he was already asleep. She found herself staring at Taki and thought it wasn't the right time to comfort him. Then she noticed that Taki had written a note to himself, promising to improve his shot. Kana realized that Taki wasn't the type to give up so easily. When Taki's mom came back from the store, she woke him up, and Taki noticed that Kana had written next to his note, saying she would also work on improving her shots. The next day, Hario mentioned that they would face each other in the finals, but first, he had to play against Hyoda, the best player in the country. Taki didn't lose hope and declared that he would give it his all. However, in his first match, he faced Yosa and lost with no chance to recover. The match ended so quickly that Taki didn't even realize what had happened. Taki was devastated, and suddenly Hina appeared, eager to watch his matches. But when she found out everything was over, she started asking if there would be any more games. When everyone confirmed that the matches were done, Hina was disappointed, feeling bad for Taki after all the effort he had put in. However, Taki was eliminated in his very first match. He was deeply upset, and it was hard for Hina to watch him like that. But for the first time, Taki decided to talk to her. Hina approached him and said she had brought the lunch she promised. Taki apologized to Hina, feeling guilty that she had come all this way just to see him lose in the first round. Taki admitted that he knew he wasn't ready for the finals yet, but he wasn't planning to give up. Hina noticed that Taki always looked forward and gave his all, no matter the situation. The next match was Hyoda versus Hario. The game was incredibly inspiring, with Hyoda securing another victory. Despite this, Hario didn't give up, but it wasn't enough and he lost to Hyoda once again. Hario wasn't too upset, but was furious about losing to Hyoda yet again. On his way home, Taki realized there was no point in being sad. Instead, he needed to train harder 
and give it his all next year. When Taki returned home, he heard his mom celebrating Kana's victory and the fact that she had advanced further. Taki was genuinely happy for Kana, but felt disappointed in himself for not keeping his promise to her. He had vowed they would advance together, but he had fallen short. 